man, what a difference a week makes. A week ago, we're talking about the great job Michigan did against Iowa. They took out the Hawkeyes in really decisive and dominant fashion. It was really kind of the talk of, of last week, other than the discussion about Iowa versus Penn State. And then the Wolverines, they go to Lincoln, take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, another really tough team, and they got absolutely dominated. A uh, very surprising result. And a lot of the matches were kind of go-either-way matches, and they just went Nebraska's way, and they went their way in a big way. Uh, starting at 125, D'Agostino of Michigan comes out, gets the first takedown, but Smith runs him down, gets some takedowns and some key near fall to take out D'Agostino. That was a coin flip match. But then you go to 33, where you've got number four, Dylan Ragason, taking on Jacob Van D, who's ranked in the 20s. And Van D wins, basically on a, uh, he gets a last second escape, but really it was a locked hands call early in the second period. And Ragason was in on several takedowns, several takedowns, couldn't finish. And ultimately, it's the biggest upset on paper was Van D over Dylan Ragason. Van D is tough. He's really tough, but you still would not have anticipated that he'd be able to take out Dylan Ragason. 41, Brock Hardy and Sergio Limley. I mean, I could watch those guys wrestle all day. This was back and forth. And this was one where I feel like even though Michigan lost, you can be pretty happy with the with the effort and maybe not the result because Sergio was wrestling hard. He was in position to win. Hardy's just really savvy. He's good in a lot of positions. He's really tough in scrambles. He's tricky. And I think um, ultimately it was a shootout kind of match and Hardy got the late takedown that won it for him. But the big one was at 149 where I'll be honest, I thought Austin Gomez was going to win this match based on the fact that last time they wrestled, Austin won. He won dominantly. So I thought, all right, well, this is probably going to be Austin again because you look at the at, at Austin so far this year as well. He's looked really good. Not that Ridge Love it hasn't. He's number one. He's wrestled way more, but it starts off. Gomez tries to throw, wasn't there at all. Errant throw, and it just fell off a cliff for Austin after that. And Ridge put on an incredible performance from the top position. He looked so dominant there. He was able to turn him and ride him and. Gomez was never really close to getting away, and then he took bottom, and he proceeded to get ridden and turn some more. So I didn't quite understand that game plan, nor did I necessarily understand Ridge taking neutral in the third and winning 11-4 in a match he really kind of handled. But either way, it was a message to 149 pounds from Ridge Lovett, in my opinion. It's one of the most impressive performances at the weight so far this year, maybe the most impressive, and could be the second most impre impressive was Ridge winning CKLV and taking out Caleb Henson. So he is the clear number one, and he's going to remain that way. So great job by Ridge Lovett in Nebraska. Peyton Robb gets back on the winning uh, on the winning side of things, taking out Will Lewan 2-1 in regulation, not overtime. Antrell Taylor knocked off Cam Amin, and then pretty much everything else went, went chalk for Nebraska and, and, and Michigan. So a great performance by Nebraska in Lincoln. Epic crowd. And really, it just shows how week to week these teams can be really different, right? They can be up. They can be down. I mean, we saw this same Nebraska team get walloped by Iowa. I mean, they were, they were beaten soundly. And that's just the nature of college wrestling. There's just a lot of change and a lot of unpredictability. And we certainly saw that in the in the Nebraska versus Michigan duel.